Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And we're moving right along with the month of December. And you know, I guess your winter break will be coming up here soon. Or if you have some vacation time, you might want to consider traveling around the world. We don't really have a country we're talking about today specifically, but we are talking about idioms for the well-traveled English learner. These are idioms that include the names of countries in them, and they're quite useful. It's kind of fun.、Uh, here are some very、uh, well-known idioms. You could say an idiom, of course, is a group of words. Sometimes it's just a couple, or maybe even one, but they are figurative. So if you hear them, you don't necessarily know what it means. That's why we have to really study a little harder to learn the idioms. Ours are kind of interesting.、Um, some have more words than others. But we're going to explain what they mean and when and how you can use them. They're they're very useful. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's read through the entire contents of today's lesson, and we'll be back to talk about things one idiom at a time. Let's do as the Romans do and go Dutch in a New York minute. Many sayings in English refer to different places in the world. But did you ever wonder how these international idioms came to be? Each one has an interesting story that can help you learn a little more about world history. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. This adage reminds travelers to be mindful of local customs. It has its origins in the fourth-century Roman Empire, when early Christian leader Saint Augustine moved from Rome to Milan. He found that unlike Romans. Milanese churchgoers didn't fast on Saturdays. The bishop of Milan told Augustine, "When I go to Rome, I fast on Saturday, but here I do not," advising him to follow local practices and avoid scandal. Over 1,700 years later, his wise words endure. French leave. Another idiom talks about leaving a place without letting others know. While a French leave might be nothing more than quietly exiting a party, it could also be quite serious, like a soldier deserting their post. The concept comes from a French custom of leaving social gatherings without saying goodbye to the host. Americans often call this an Irish goodbye, and in France itself, it's called leaving English style. Go Dutch. When you and your friends split the bill at a restaurant, you are going Dutch. The Oxford English Dictionary says the phrase's original, more negative meaning is connected to the Anglo-Dutch wars of the 17th century, as the English viewed the Dutch as stingy. Today, going Dutch is seen differently depending on the culture, but it certainly is less expensive than the alternative of treating the whole party. So let's dig in, guys. These are some of the、uh, the idioms for well-traveled English learners.、Uh, perhaps that's you out there, or one day will be you. We get more of a chance to travel sometimes when we're earning our own money. So here's the first、uh, paragraph. Here, let's do as the Romans do and go Dutch in a New York minute. It's a cute sentence there that our our writer has come up with. We've got. Three idioms in one sentence,、uh, and and it all makes sense to us, of course, because we know what they all mean. So, do as the Romans do. We're going to explain that more fully in a minute. It just means when you're in that country, you know, you need to adapt and do what they do. Go Dutch means if you go、uh, out with a friend, it means you split the bill, or if you're on a date, sometimes.、Uh, People who have been dating for a while, especially, will go Dutch. Or sometimes, you know, what we do is, you know, this time I'll pay, next time you pay. That that's、uh, kind of similar. And、uh, if you do something in a New York minute, it just means you're doing something very fast because、uh, life and people usually move, talk, work really fast in New York City. Okay, so there you have it, and many sayings in English refer to different places in the world. Also, maybe different places within the United States or within England. But did you ever wonder how these international idioms came to be? Yeah, why do we say these things? Do as the Romans do. Go Dutch. 
or New York Minute or whatever. So yes, each one has an interesting story that can help you learn a little more about world history. So you can get.、Uh, Uh, you can kill two birds with one stone here. You can learn the story behind these idioms, and you can learn about world history all in one go. So let's talk about the first one here. It has to do with Rome,、uh, not the city so much as the ancient. Empire、uh, around the Mediterranean Sea. There, the Roman Empire. So, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. I think the, this is equivalent to the Chinese phrase、uh, "ru jing sui su." That's right. I've heard that one here. So, yeah, kind of interesting. So, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Try to blend in. Do what they do.、Uh, it says here in paragraph two, we're using this word adage. Um, if someone uses this word with you,、uh, an adage, adage is just a familiar phrase. It's usually a proverb, a short statement, expresses some sort of、uh, general truth that people have all agreed upon. Yeah, usually it's like that. So、uh, this adage reminds travelers to be mindful of local customs. That's really important. Do you know? I was glad I went to Thailand with my friend who lived there because. I hadn't had enough time to read about local customs, and she was the one who was telling me if you go to one of those beautiful temples, you must remove your shoes, you must, you know, dress respectfully. Those are very important to the local people. A custom is something a particular group、um, of people. You know, has done for a long time. They feel like it's important. It's part of their tradition. They have customs. We also know this word as、uh, customs. In terms of you know, if you come back to Taiwan and you bring things in from another country, sometimes you have to pay a customs fee. You know, that's different. So here, it's just some of those traditions that are very, very、uh, popular and that have existed for a long time within a group of people or within a particular culture. Right, customs, and it has its origins in the fourth century Roman Empire. Of course,、uh, Rome was an empire with an emperor. Any country or nation that has an emperor as its leader will be called an empire. I guess technically,、uh, China should have been called an empire because it had the emperor, the Huangdi. You know, so Japan still has an emperor, but we don't refer to it usually as the、uh, what the Empire of Japan. Do we? No. Yeah, for a short time in the seventies <laughs> or so there. Was the Central African Empire,、mm. which、uh, no longer exists now. But、uh-huh. in any case, yeah, empire. You get the idea here. And back to the word origin here. That just means where something comes from, especially if you're talking about a legend or a story, or in this case, the meaning of a word. Right. So yeah, this is way back in the fourth century. Wow, that's 300 A.D. So it was a long time ago when early、uh, we had this early Christian leader. Who's become, I think, a famous saint for the Catholic Church. His name was Saint Augustine. He moved from Rome to Milan. So Milan is in Italy currently, and he found that in Milan, unlike the Romans, the Milanese churchgoers didn't fast on Saturdays. Uh, we could refer to this as some sort of custom in Milan. Remember, we just talked about customs. So in Rome, they did fast on Saturdays, but in Milan, those Milanese—those are the people who live in Milan. They weren't going to fast on Saturdays, so they did things differently. You could say a churchgoer is simply someone who goes to church, right? So、uh, at that time, there was a bishop. He's a leader. Of the Catholic Church, in particular, but we also have bishops in other Christian organizations. This bishop of Milan told Augustine, "Hey, when I go to Rome, I fast on sa- Saturday, but here I do not. So wherever you are, just base your actions on what those people there do, unless it's pretty serious to you, and then do what you need to do. But yeah, so that makes sense. So when I go to Rome, I fast with you guys, but when I'm here in Milan." Where I live, I don't fast with the,、uh, the people around here.
Absolutely. So the bishop of Milan said, "Hey, when I go to Rome, I do as the Romans do. I fast on Saturday. I don't want to stick out. I don't want to be weird or something. But、uh, when I go back to Milan, I don't fast on Saturday. Remember, to fast means to refuse to eat food for whatever reason.、Uh, the Muslims fast during Ramadan, for example, during the day.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, this, of course, was advising him to follow local practices and avoid scandal. That's what the bishop was telling." Saint Augustine, hey, follow the local practices. Do as the Romans do.、Uh, so that's what he was advising him to do. If you advise someone to do something, or if you give them advice, you have some information that they don't, and then you tell them about it. You tell them about that information so that they、uh, can use that information. Yeah, it's like giving、uh, some tips to someone. I wanted to point out, if you were listening carefully, you heard Tom pronounce the verb as advise with a Z, but the noun form is an S sound, advice. It's also spelled differently. A D V I C E is the noun form. Here we're using the verb. So he did advise him to follow the local practices or customs, you could say, and avoid scandal. Ooh. Scandal can be countable and uncountable. Here we're using it as a, a non-count way. Just avoid scandal in general. If you're talking about scandal, you're talking about things that people have done that are pretty shocking to others.、Uh, usually, it has to do with something that's morally wrong. Uh, maybe it's legally wrong too. Sometimes we know politicians will take bribes under the table, as we like to say, which is just secretly accept bribes to do something.、It、happens in every government, unfortunately. So yeah, if you want to avoid scandal and have people gossiping about you and saying things about you, oh, he's not a good Catholic. He doesn't fast on Saturdays. So. He was actually trying to help、uh, by giving him this advice. Over seventeen hundred years later, his wise words endure. Guys, in Taiwan, I often have people who want to say one thousand seven hundred years. I have to warn you:、uh, if you're working with foreigners, we're not going to say one thousand seven hundred years. Because it takes too long, we're going to say seventeen hundred years. So you need to get used to listening to that way of reading numbers、uh, when you're using thousands, at least. So it was a long time ago, but his wise words endure. To endure just means to last for a long, long time. Yep, indeed.、Uh, learning English is hard, so we hope you can all endure. Okay, that brings us to the halfway point in today's lesson. Let's take a break now, and we'll come right back. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第二单元。我们今天谈的跟学英文有关。我们学英文的时候呢，其实呢一定会背到不少的谚语、惯用语。但是这些惯用语呢，其实是很有趣的。标题写的 Well-traveled English learner. 为什么会用这个标题呢？说起来，它像是在讲。遍游世界的一个英文学习者，可是为什么要讲遍游全世界？下面这些片语就是告诉你，因为就这些片语的内容，你学的时候、讲的时候，就好像你已经到过很多不同的国家了。我们就先来看第一段里面，这边就举了几个例子，大家也许都听过的 ：Do as the Romans do, Go Dutch, New York Minute。这些意思。用语怎么来的呢？我们看到这一段里面有两个片语，一个呢就提到 refer to， 提到说英文呐、啊，很多的谚语指的就是世界各地不同的地方 refer to， 还有一个片语就是他提到这些片语究竟怎么来的啊、oh, ？How these international idioms came to be？ 我们知道 come to 再加一个。原动这个呢，在用的时候，它有一种感觉，就是哎，这个事情是经过了一段的时间而有的一个结果，所以这表示经历过一段时间 ，come to be， 到底究竟怎么来的？我们就来看这些片语它背后的故事。第一个，也就是刚刚提到的“入境随俗 ”，do as the Romans do。这个谚语，它要大家知道，如果说你到了一个地方，不管这里你喜不喜欢
，你最好就跟着当地人来做。看到这个片语，要提醒大家注意的 ，be mindful of。注意什么？注意当地人的风俗习惯。这边另外他提到这个谚语的来源 ，it has its origins in the fourth century Roman Empire。我们晓得 origin 就代表起源。当然，如果你要说一个事情，它起源于什么时间，起源于什么样的故事背景？ Has its origin in? 这是一个很好用的片语。当然，你可以直接换成另外一个动词 originate, o r i g i n a t e. 接下来就是看到了，他说哦，这跟罗马帝国时代有关。接下来就提到当时啊，在米兰这里，他们跟罗马人不太一样。如果你在做礼拜的时候，这米兰人他是不会在星期六。进食的，我们看到这个动词 fast，fast， fast, 我们比较习惯、比较知道的是它当做快，不管是形容词也好，副词也好。不过这一边的 fast 是代表一个动词哦，代表进食，不吃东西。但是米兰人他们星期六不进食。罗马人是会的，所以啊，这里就提到米兰主教就告诉 Augustine， 当时的基督教领导人，我到罗马去，当然礼拜六我会进食，不过啊，在这边我是不会的。意思就是，你既然来这儿，你就要遵守我们这边的惯例。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back again. We just talked about the phrase "win in Rome, do as the Romans do." So, of course, that uh, uh, had its origins in fourth-century Rome. So, of course, this particular phrase has endured for a long time. Of course, endure, and this、uh, meaning means it's、uh, lasted for a long time. But endure could also mean you're suffering for some reason. Now,、uh, I did wanted to mention before we go on to France here, there are some other idioms having to to do with Rome that I'll just Mentioned in passing here, one is、uh, Rome was not built in a day. That means things take time to do. And another one is all roads lead to Rome. I guess that means that's like the capital city, and that's where the action is centered. Now let's、uh, go to France here and have some wine and cheese and some、uh, crepe suzette and boeuf bourguignon and whatever. And we're talking about something called French leave. And、uh, you know, I had not heard this phrase myself before. We talked about this before the program began. French leave. I've heard of.、Uh, A、uh, French kiss—that's、uh, a certain way of kissing. But to hear French leave means something else. Yeah, I've never heard of it either. But now we both know.、Uh, when we、uh, get to the end of this paragraph, I have heard of the Irish goodbye, which is interesting, but not the French leave. So, what does it mean? It's another idiom, and it's talking about leaving a place. Without letting others know, maybe you're at a party, and you have to leave early. But you're, you know, kind of boo how you say you have to leave. That happened to me Saturday. I had to leave early, and so I was like, "Sorry, but I didn't talk to everybody." You just kind of have to slip out the door.、Um, while a French leave might be nothing more than quietly exiting a party. It's kind of what I had to do. It could also be quite serious. So here's the serious, serious situation. Could be like a soldier who is serving their country, deserting their post. Their post here just means where they've been assigned to work in the military. And if you desert your post, it means you, you know, you you kind of flake out, which means you kind of chicken out. You're a coward and you leave. So yeah,、uh, it's. It's a good thing. It doesn't happen very often because most people love their countries. But some soldiers do desert, desert their post, or desert、uh, the rest of their comrades, the people they're fighting with. So that could also mean French leave, and you could use that phrase to mean、uh, someone was deserting somewhere. 
That's right, and of course,、uh, the concept comes from a French custom of leaving social gatherings without saying goodbye to the host. I guess the French do that. I guess they think it's not necessary to say goodbye to the host. And as you mentioned before, Americans often call this an Irish goodbye.、Mm. And in France itself, hey, they get back at the English here. It's called leaving English style. <laughs>、uh, as you know, the French usually dislike the English, and the English don't like the French, etc., etc.、Yeah. So there you have it. Uh, an idiom using the word French here. I did also want to mention another phrase using French here.、Uh, if you say "pardon my French," that means you're talking to somebody, and maybe you use some、uh, bad language or some swear words,、mm. and you realize that the other people don't really appreciate that. So you can say, "Oh, pardon my French."、Uh, sorry, I said uh, uh, four-letter words there.、Uh, I guess that comes from the idea that、uh, to English-speaking ears, French might sound like you're cussing or something like that. Or Swearing—that's、so, course, what cussing means. Yeah, yeah. yeah so,、uh, pardon my French. There, I didn't mean to say <laughs> that word. Okay. Hey, can I mention here? This、uh, is one of our vocabulary words to desert.、Uh, you might have looked at it and thought we were saying deserting. A desert、mm. is the shamo.、Huh? No, this is completely different.、Uh, you could desert your 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 family. You could abandon your family. You could take a pet out. You know, in some,、uh, I guess. In a wilderness area and desert the pet,、mm. uh, don't do that. It means abandon some somebody, but it's also considered to be very disloyal or even treacherous, meaning you're committing treason. Moving on to the final one, which is very popular. You guys should all be very familiar with this: to go Dutch. Go Dutch.、Uh-huh. Dutch is the adjective to describe things from Holland or the Netherlands. And when you and your friends split the bill at a restaurant, you are going Dutch. A lot of times when you go out to eat with friends,、uh, you don't argue over who pays. Oh, watching ka, may went to. No, watching ka. You don't fight over.、It. You just say no. <laughs> we ate this together. We don't need to do that. Let's just add things up and then divide by the number of diners, and then everybody. Will pay. That's splitting the bill. Everybody pays equally. If the bill is thirty-three dollars, then what? Everybody pays eleven dollars or something.、Yeah. If it's a party of three, so that's what you. When you split the bill, you proportion it into equal parts. Yeah, unless I, I have to say, unless you have. Eaten or、uh, had a lot of、uh, something to drink, which costs a lot of money if you're drinking alcohol. If you've actually、uh, spent a lot more than your friends, to be fair, you should put more into the pot. The pot here is the 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 money that's going to pay the entire bill. So go Dutch. We also use it quite frequently when we're talking about dating. Um, it's been tradition, at least in in America, for the guy to pay for the dates. You know, the what a, whatever you guys do, if you go to a movie or to a restaurant or go see a film,、uh, not a film but a concert, the guy usually pays. But I don't think that's fair. After a while, I think, wow, especially if you're both. Really poor students, or you just are starting your first job. You don't have a lot of money. You should always offer. For me, I think that's、uh, appropriate. Ladies always offer to pay too, or go Dutch. So I've done both.、Um, so it just means you're splitting the bill at the restaurant. You're going Dutch, and like Tom said, it's kind of a fight here sometimes. No, what's he good? No, what's he good? But、um, since I'm a foreigner, and a lot of my friends who are Taiwanese understand the foreigners. A little better. They now know that、uh, it's totally okay just to split the bill, and that's what we usually do. Now, the Oxford English Dictionary says the phrase's original, more negative meaning, because "go Dutch" is positive today,、um, was connected to the Anglo-Dutch Wars of the 17th century. <laughs> okay, so here are the the Anglo just refers to Great Britain, right? So back then. It was just England, but、um, they were fighting the the Anglo-Dutch wars back in the 1600s, and the English viewed the Dutch as stingy. What does stingy mean? Ooh, you don't want anyone to call you stingy. It means you're very cheap. You won't share with others. You、uh, make sure that you don't. Ever overpay a dime or a penny or whatever?、Um, it means you're a tightwad, which means you don't like to part with your money.、Uh, these are all、uh, synonyms for stingy. A tightwad. Oh, he's so cheap. Yeah, xiao qi. You don't want to be any of this, guys. Stingy is not good. 
Okay, so today going Dutch is seen differently depending on the culture, but it certainly is less expensive than the alternative of treating the whole party. So think about、True. it that way. <laughs> If you go out to dinner with twenty people and you want to show off your wealth, you might say, "Well, maybe it's better to go Dutch、uh, and、uh, everybody pay their equal portion."、Yeah. But indeed, it depends on the culture.、Uh, of course, here in Taiwan, it's、uh, usually a sign of face if you're able to pay for the whole meal and. My goodness,、uh, my sister-in-law always wants to chink her all the time. Well, it's because I'm the older sister. I'm supposed to do that.、Mm. No, can't we go Dutch? No, I got to pay. So we usually have arguments about that.、Mm. But in any case, you don't want to be too stingy if you're going Dutch. I guess that was again、uh, from the Anglo-Dutch Wars of the 1600s. So the English got this impression of the Dutch being stingy. Gee, I wonder what kind of impression the Dutch had of the English. Interesting. That's a good question. The English were probably forcing the Dutch to eat those scones and those、uh, meat pies and stuff, and the Dutch were forcing the British to plant their tulips all over the place, <laughs> and that's why they went to war. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 好，我们继续来看下面介绍第二个谚语 French leave. 什么叫 French leave? 说起来，这个片语的意思就是不告而别。这边解释到 ，a French leave might be nothing more than quietly exiting a party. Nothing more than 这个片语合在一起是表示不过就只是什么而已。说穿了，它的意思就是一个人安静的离开某一个 party， 然后呢不让人家注意到他离开了。不过，这个谚语用起来的时候，有时候可能是很严重的。比如说，在战场上打仗的士兵，结果你擅离职守，你没有跟人家讲就偷溜了，这也是一种 French leave。不过，接下来提到了几个有趣的事情，就是在英文里面，我们说它是一个 French leave， 可是同样的意思呢？如果是在美国来说，美国人他们说这种你自己安安静静走开，不让人家知道你离开一个场合了，你说他是一个 Irish goodbye。可是相对的，在法国呢，他们也不说这是 French leave， 他们说他是 leaving English style， 换句话是英式的离开。我们再来看第三个片语，这个叫 go Dutch。go Dutch 是各付各的。也就是你付你的，我付我的，不相欠。这个片语它原先的故事里是有一点负面的。那是西元十七世纪的时候，英荷战争。那之后，英国人觉得说荷兰人是很吝啬的，所以用 go Dutch 来表示我们今天说的各付各的。哎，我不帮你付账，你也不用帮我付账。不过现在这个片语可能就看是哪一个文化对它的解释。并不相同。那我们注意到这个片语哦 ，view us。The English view the Dutch as stingy. View somebody as blah blah blah. 如果你说一个人视他为怎样，不用 view， 也可以用别的动词，像 take。像 see， 像 regard， 都可以表示同样的意思。好，我们今天讲解就到这边结束。谢谢大家的收听。That's it, guys. Thanks for joining us.、Uh, this is our fun unit, as you know, and we're not finished talking about、uh, idioms for the well-traveled English learner. So come back for our next program, and we'll teach you a few more. For English Digest, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.